Storybook Doc Blocks let you document and share UI components with generated interface documentation, interactive playgrounds, and copy pasteable source code. Let's take a look at all of the doc blocks that you can use to quickly document and share your UI components. Doc blocks are used two places in storybooks, in docs page templates and in MDX documentation. Now, if you're not familiar with those use cases, I'm gonna include two links to other videos that we recently produced on both of those topics. Today, we're working in this button.stories TSX file. We have a fairly standard story file signature with a handful of stories defined. One difference you may notice is the custom docs page template that we're rendering right here. This is where all our work will happen. We'll see changes by opening our button components in the docs page. Let's start customizing our new docs page with just a title and description. First, import doc blocks from Storybook doc blocks. And I'll leave this empty for now, but VS Code will start filling in the named exports as we start using them here. The title component renders a styled H1 tag. Without props, it's gonna use either the auto title or the title defined in component meta, but it also accepts children if we want to override that title. For now, we'll just use the default. The description component renders a styled P tag, and the source that it uses can be found in a JS doc comment in the component source file. Now, unlike title, it does not accept children as of Storybook 7. Finally, we have a subtitle component that renders a styled H2 tag. Without props, it'll use the component subtitle parameter, which can be customized in component meta. Subtitle does accept children, so we can customize this as well. To render custom documentation inside of Storybook, we need a way to render stories and the source that creates those stories. For that, we have story, source, canvas, and stories. Let's start with the story component. Without props, it will render the first story in a component story file. In this case, that's primary. And when it renders it, it renders right into the document. The source component can be used to display a copy and pasteable snippet of the code used to produce that story. And without any props, it also defaults to the first story for primary. Now, Canvas is like story and source wrapped into one. Unlike story, it wraps everything inside of this box. And with this accordion, we can show or hide the copyable code snippet. Of course, we have other stories beyond just the primary story. We have a secondary, a large, etc. To account for that, all of these story components can take an of prop, story of secondary. Save that and our documentation will reflect the change. If we want all of these to operate on that secondary, we can copy that of and paste it on those as well. Now, everything shows that secondary story. Now, it would be a real slog if every time we added or removed stories, we had to update our template as well. So Storybook provides a stories component that you can use to render all the stories complete with a title and description. Now, Storybook doc blocks aren't limited to static documentation. In fact, the coolest use case for Storybook doc blocks is to create interactive documentation using args and controls. To start, we'll use the primary doc block. Now in this component, there's actually a story named primary. So we need to rename that on import primary as primary doc block and update the docs page template. This component gives us a full storybook UI with the zoom and zoom out buttons, a refresh button, as well as the story source code. Next up is the arg types doc block. Arg types displays a table of the component props generated by TypeScript or JS doc. Controls are just like the args type table, but with one added feature. We get a fourth column that allows us to interact with this primary doc block. So primary can be true or false. We can change the text of this to my button and even the color, all controlled by the type interface defined by this component. I hope that you're inspired to start communicating your components through clear interactive documentation using Storybook doc blocks. If you haven't had a chance, the new reference docs for doc blocks are absolutely incredible. You can find them at storybook.js.org. As well, I'll include a link in the description below. If you'd like to continue learning with me, check out one of these recent videos on documentation in Storybook. I think you'll like those a lot. That's it for me. I'm Chantastic. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.